Hi guys, so today I wanted to do a kind of a quick card since I already have another video out today and um, just something fun and uh, easy. And you guys really like the backgrounds we made with the local king uh, safari stamp and things like that uh, yesterday and I used the um, Jane Davenport mermaid markers and I'm going to use those again today but then as I was getting papers and looking for this because this is basically what I'm going to base this whole thing on, um, this... Um, cut and emboss folder uh, I, I came across these guys because I put everything away in the same place whenever I have my Jane Davenport stuff and spellbinders things so well like, you know what? I'll try these too because I haven't tried these so if I have any links in the uh, description box under the video here you can expand it under show more or people tell me it's a little triangle and I always say it's a carrot on this side if you're like on a tablet and back in the day we used to call carrots the little triangle, so I don't know. That's an uh, old typing term, I guess. So the little triangle over here, or just where it says show more, things like that. Um, uh, there will be affiliate links, which means I will make a small uh, commission if you use those links to buy any products, and I really appreciate the support. And that way the prices do not change. It's the same as you would buy them regardless, but um, the, uh, they're just affiliate links. So uh, thank you so much. So. Um, what I decided to do is, yeah, we'll try all these out. So I have a water pen here, a water brush, should I say. I really like water brushes. You can use any brush that can apply water, right? <laughs> just your basic wash brush or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, so all I'm going to do is just do two washes. I'm kind of trying to make them similar and see what happens. This is just regular stamping paper um, from Crafters Companion. So it's a little bit thicker. So just like a good you know, like 300 or so GSM paper is what I like to use for things like this because they do take a lot of water, a lot of mixed media, and it'll be fine. So uh, I'm going to use that. Um, so first let's do the uh, water... I was calling water markers. I don't, it's kind of weird because they call them mermaid markers. They're not really markers, right? They're water brushes with ink in them. Um, and I always have an extra water brush with these. It's kind of how you're going to have to use them because otherwise it's just always ink, always pigment, and there's no way to really get it moving um, unless that's what you want, right? The really deep, rich colors. So, um, really interesting, uh, things here. So I think, what do I want to use? Pink, blue, and purple, like we always go with. Maybe teal, or should we do the blue? Uh, we'll do blue. And this purple, and this brighter pink. I think. So I haven't swatched any of these, obviously, uh, the blue I've tried before. So we have our um, blue bottle, and starfish, and jellyfish. And I did pick these up when they were on sale. I believe they might still be on sale today. Uh, I guess it depends on when you're watching this on Spellbinders. Again, these are not inexpensive, so definitely get them when they're on sale. Um, and then the aqua pastels, the watercolor crowns, I haven't really checked those out with their pricing before when they're not on sale, but um, I don't know. Again, I should have had a little water here with me. I do not. I'm just going to break up this. I usually like to dip this in water for the first time because it has like a binder on it that keeps it really crusty. And give them a squeeze. I can see it's already coming through. And this one too. I'll just give it a little squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You can kind of see the liquid come in here, the ink. So it's basically dye ink that's in there. Okay, I can see it's coming through to the tip. And so to start off, we're going to do both of them basically the same way. I don't, well, actually, the aqua pastels I might do a little bit differently because I don't think I need to wet the paper as much. But for this, I want the water to move, so I'm going to wet my paper down. And again, if you just want to use a brush and dip it, that's up to you. And doo -doo -doo, what do I want to do? Well, I can do something similar to this. So maybe start with the pink into the purple into the blue. Maybe. Oh, I didn't break up the tip on this one. Oh, that's so pretty. And it moves really nicely, so that's always good. So pink... Oopsie. Into the purple. I should have had these going. Oh, I like that purple. It's kind of a plump, like a deeper purple. I thought it'd be brighter. And I was kind of wanting for a deep color, so it came out perfect. Oh, I got some pink on there. And into the blue. And if your paper's already getting sucked up, you can add more water, obviously. Look at that. I think... That's okay. Now, I can come back in here with this. I don't know that I want to lighten the color, though. I'm just trying to get it to the edges. There we go. I'm going to wipe it on this towel over here. I really like this purple. 
that's better. All right, I'm just wiping off whenever I dipped into a color over here on this paper towel. So what I'm gonna do is clean up this area and hit this with a heat tool just so it dries a little faster. And all this stuff you can pick up with another paper if you're you know, the type of person that likes to just keep using whatever gets all over the place. Um, I'm letting the paper towel kind of suck up the stuff that's dripping down to the sides here. And I am going to hit it with a heat tool just to help me out dry this and I'll be back. Okay, I'm almost there. So what I do like is that it didn't take a lot of water for it to move. So this is not sopping wet, you know, it's already pretty dry. Do you guys remember when I did the, um, I think it was Freeform Friday, no. Oh no, I made the Spellbinders book, the Becca Fekin one, and I made my own background papers, you know, and they were so wet, ridiculously wet. It was really kind of annoying because it would, took forever to dry. Like this is not so, like just a little application of water plus this, it moved really easily on here. So I do like that. So that's good. That's a good thing. Um, I didn't clean up as much as I thought I would, but there we are. Um, I'm going to bring out this other paper. Again, same stamping paper. And I'll use these guys since I've never used these before. But I do have recent videos on using art crayons, which is basically what these are. It does say aqua pastels, and then it says um, before using the first time to, to, use, to wipe them a little bit with like a wet thing because they have like a wax coating on it. If you can see that white kind of crustiness on here <laughs> um so yeah i can see that it just needs to come off so it says to use a baby wipe or a wet towel it looks like this works just as well um this is kind of a that's the kind of pink i want i think and then blue and purple same thing let's do this purple i think that's a good purple and this blue These are very stiff. Okay. So yeah, it says just do that and then apply them like anything else. So we will see what happens. So I'm going to start with the pink one. I'm just going to take a acrylic block just to kind of put it on here. If you put it on here and use your water, it's going to leave a mark like indelible. Not, well, not indelible because you're, you're going to be able to spread it, but it's going to stay. Well, let me show you. <laughs> Let's say I come in here and I'm like, oh, I'm going to use that. And then I got my water brush. I didn't press really hard either, just so you know. Like, it's melting. Hey, these... Well, I was going to say, this is a lot better than other ones I've used. But you can still see the, the the lines, the original lines. And if you like that, if you like that texture, go for it. I mean, that's great. I think for some things you might want some texture like that. But for right now, what I'm going to do is really, 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 really rub a lot of this here. And I'm going to be generous with it, because what happens with these things is that we get afraid and we don't use them. It's like, just use it. <laughs> you know, just use it. So I'm going to add a lot of water here. At least I'm trying to. And I'm going to apply this. Now this is very, very light wash here. So I'm going to try to maybe... You can always layer it up. I think I'm going to apply some more and just not add so much water this time. You know what I'm saying? Just use the amount of water that's still here. And you see I did not put water on my paper to begin with because I had a feeling when you do it this way, it's just a little bit different than applying straight ink, right? This is very pigmented ink that we put on there. Okay, let's go from there to our purple. And I'm trying to push really hard. Okay, a little water. This is much softer, much more muted, very pretty. Again, you can uh, layer it up. You can wait for this to dry and then do it again. I'm going to wipe that off a little bit and then into the blue. Let's see if that's enough. So pretty. Oh, let me move it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. This one's much, much more muted. I'll get a little more of this blue. Okay, and I think that's probably as good as that's going to get. Let me 
funny this one feels a lot wetter than the last paper all right I'm gonna dry that up and so yeah this is the first time I've used these I'm like I said you can build it up I'm not gonna spend the time to keep you know laying this dry and then do it again um, but look at the difference here already Woo! all right let me hit this again with the heat tool and we'll get okay. to cutting so in my mind that we are ready to roll I think what I was gonna do is oops is, um, I don't even remember what I was going to say. All right, so all we're going to do is back this up, this little area, maybe with something shiny, right, and behind it, um, and then put it on our card, and a little distressing. So uh, I was looking at this. This is much bigger. The, the, I cut my piece of paper to four by five and a quarter so that it mats over your standard A2 size card of four and a quarter by five and a half really well. And when I cut it down, I was like, oh, you know, this is really big compared to this. But the cutting area and the embossing area is just in here. If you can see, there's not going to do anything up here or down here. So it's pretty much set up for matting a card just like that. Now, if you want to do five and a half by four and a quarter, it will just leave an edge right around the edge that doesn't have anything going for it. So um, just know that. So I think that's pretty cool. There we kind of have it sized. Cause I was like, ooh, I'm gonna have to chop part of this off or try to judge where I want to put this, but here we go. Okay, so they do not have names on either side of this thing, but where the cutting edge is, that's the side that you want your, the paper that you want facing up to be facing, right? Because this is going to push up your embossing and then it's going to cut into your paper. So um, just know that. That looks pretty good. I'm trying to see if it's straight. And it's okay. And I'm just going to run through my Anna Griffin here. I know people are going to ask if they can put it through their marquee. Okay, so. Diamond Press has said not to put 3D folders through your marquee. Uh, you can put any embossing folder through. But what they told me is not the 3D ones. So I'm saying no, but I know you guys have told me you put your 3D folders through there. So I suppose do whatever you like, but I'd rather not risk it. So pretty. We're going to distress this a little bit in just a minute, but look at all that detail. So nice. Okay, so there's that one. And then... Hopefully everything, the little foam, do not ever pick out these little foams. It's there to help you deject the paper. Deject? Eject? Something? I don't know. All right, let's get this one going. Oh, oh you know what? I kind of want them to be the same so you can have the difference. So I will put the pink on top, but um, you can do this however you like, obviously. So yeah, so those aqua pastels, I guess that's why I would say they have the name aqua pastel and not just like art crayon because it is acting more of a pastel and it's really soft and pretty where the art crayons you could get like color right <laughs> just more like this okay machine what will you do at the end there she's like eh. <laughs> not the best sound in the world this is very very light so cute okay So uh, Spellbinders has tons of these kind of cut and embossed folders that it just, you know, you have your um, larger area and just a little something cut out. And of course you can do this with any cut and embossed folder, you know, Anna Griffin, Crafts Companion, any company. And I know you guys always ask, um, I get this question a lot, probably daily, if you can interchange dies depending on, you know, the companies. Yes, any thin metal die will go through any thin metal die machine. So uh, don't be afraid of that. I'm just talking about thicknesses as far as like embossing folders. Sometimes they're different and you want to be careful with those um, with a smaller crank machine. But anyway, uh, so I'm just going to take this nail file. I buy these from like Nailite for like two or three bucks. You can find them everywhere. Um, super cheap. Even the ones that they have like a dollar tree will work. Whatever little file. And I'm just going to buff this up a little bit just so that we can get some texture going. And I'm not pushing down super hard, but... So I'm just gonna run this over. Look how cute it looks with the white dots right there. So I'll go over this however long, eh, maybe a little more. And this one, I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. I hope it does. It's just that it's so light and pastel. Yeah, I love the dots. The dots are so cute, that area. Okay, so I'll be right back. I'm just gonna do a little more a detail work, kind of look at it closer. And um, we'll layer it up and make a okay. card. If I knew where this was going and who I was giving it to, I would totally do this differently because I would use the bomb gold paper that you can get from Spellbinders, that really pretty gold uh, mirror 
cardstock and I bought tons of it now and I don't have one to show you but it always comes in their kits and I think it'd be really pretty but right now I just grabbed this enchanted Christmas uh, crafters companion set and I know it has all these pretty colors of kind of like foil card here and I was thinking about matting the whole thing but then I thought no so what I'm gonna do is just have it peekaboo from the from behind so it always comes with these little pieces in the front and I always use them up do not waste those um, so I think for this one, I'm gonna put some purple back here. And this does not have to be perfect. So what I'm just gonna do is just cut some pieces that I think will work because I'm not gonna mat the whole card. I'm just gonna put it behind, you know? So I just need another piece that's about similar to that. So something like that. And then this one, I'm gonna do silver, but I think gold would be really pretty, but I do have this little silver piece here. Or any of these pieces would be really nice. And I'm just going to give that a cut there. And this will probably be enough to do both. Right, that little strip at the top. And then down here. And I'm gonna find something to uh, die cut, like a sentiment. Um, yeah, let me go look for something like that. Okay, so <laughs> I went looking through a bunch of my stuff because um, I'm like, oh, I just need a sentiment. Then I know I saw, you know, some diamond press things. I'm like, I but I don't want to have to say now that you know, it was sent for review or that I sent it before. So like I didn't say at the beginning of the video. So I don't want to. So I'm looking for things that I bought personally, you know, <laughs> and um, some stamps of life stuff. But anyway, I finally found a sentiment I think will work for this card because the card is kind of fun and different. So I do have some white card base here. It's just eight and a half by five and a half. We're going to score it at four and a quarter. And <laughs> yesterday, recently, I've just been scoring or just doing this kind of thing and folding it. And a gal here, one of my regulars is like, you need a bone folder. I'm like, girl, I have like 15 bone folders. <laughs> I just don't want to bring them out. It's not the biggest deal, you know, but there it is. Uh, I hear my kids moving around. It's not even, oh no, it just turned eight o'clock actually. Oh, that means I'm late for Crafters TV and it probably won't be We'll see if I make it today. Um, but yeah, no, I have a ton of, and they're just sitting right in front of me, actually. I can just grab a few here. They're <laughs> just in this thing. So I, I have tons. I just don't care to pull them out. All right, so here's that. And I'm trying to think if I want to layer this up high. I think I might. So I'm just going to glue these pieces here, see? But for that to work, I'm going to put the glue on here so I know where I'm putting it. And I'm just going to use this all-purpose call all again. There's always links in the description box for these items, just because I get questions a lot about these. So obviously you can find it wherever you want to find it, but I always have a permanent link there, basically. Um, and I'm just going to put this on here. So I'm going to place something on there to keep it weighted down, because again, we have that texture. Um, and I don't want the paper to stick really well. So I'm going to put the glue, a generous amount. And I'm going to put something on top of it. I'm going to do the same thing for this one, but with the purple. Okay, so I'm just going to stack this in here and okay. I'll be back. I have things placed on these things to keep them, you know, stuck down. Uh, so in the meantime, what I'm going to do is just through my marquee, I'm going to pop, oopsie, ugh some silver paper and some of that purple paper with uh, this set from um, Jane Davenport here, You Are Unique. And I'm just gonna use the words, You Are Unique. So I'm just gonna pop these through and then we'll set up our card. Okay, so I have the purple one cut out. I just cut out the silver. And you know what is kind of cool about this one is the way the words are set up and everything. So I thought, okay, well, if you put it all on one die, you can just run them through. But when you remove this, how cute is this for a stencil? Especially with this paper, it's nice and thick. Like if you stencil through that, you're gonna definitely see the words you are unique. Isn't that cool? I think that's really cute. So I'm gonna hold on to both of these because I think that'll be a fun uh, thing to do. And they popped out real easily. So I'm gonna do both cards basically exactly the same. So let me put these things so I don't lose them. Oh yeah. I think these are dry enough, hopefully. So let's say I'm gonna take this guy. Put that there. And the 
towards you are unique. Now, I'm going to use the darker purple one on this one. If you want contrast you don't have to have the purple right behind like I had purple and purple we can do the silver but I just feel like it's kind of so muted in the background that it's nice to have that pop under and on top and I'm gonna glue these down again just putting glue on the back of my hand but you can use whatever system you like to do this with um, I kind of flatten it out a little bit otherwise the glue will pop up to the other side of your hand uh, on the top of his so I kind of get it on there kind of generously because again there's a lot of texture to this card. I'm trying to see where I'm going to put this. You are unique. So that's all I'm going to do. Um, and I'll be right back. So I'm going to dab, dab, tap, stick it down, and I'll do the same thing for the other one. Tacky glue holds the tack so fast. I was like, oh, maybe I need to move the R over a little bit, and it was like stuck down. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> so that's done. And I always like to use like kind of like a towel to help me hold things down so I don't smash it with my fingers so much so this kind of gives me the pressure but without the smashing <laughs> that's that's how you call it okay and that's it so um again you know distress the edges whatever it is you like I think it's uh good enough here we have uh lots of dimensionals here of course I like to use my 3d glue gel for this one I do kind of want it to be a stiff thing though maybe I should have used like a roller but I'm still gonna go with my 3d glue gel just because it has a lot of texture but um Definitely, you know, put some 3D foam or whatever it is that you want to use and quite a bit of it. Because um, right here it kind of bends in. There we go. There we go. So I'm just going to put a ton of this stuff everywhere. And the thing is, I have a lot of these and I want to use them up before they dry out. So I don't mind being generous with this stuff. Ooh, that's heavy. Heavy with glue. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one, and that's it. So two cards. Um, I know a lot of people say they don't like making messy cards. I hope that this, not the cards is messy, but like messy projects, right? Uh, with the inks and the watercolors and things. But I think this is pretty controlled for what it is. I think it was a lot of fun, and I think it came out really pretty. So I'll mount this other one up just the same way. I'll have pictures for you guys, and I um, hope you're all doing well. And um, thanks for watching. And yeah, I mean, look at that. I mean, totally different tones really cool so thanks for watching i will see you guys at the next one and as always the links will be in the description box there and uh, be well bye now